Krasnyarsk, Russia. Located on the Anisi River, it's the third largest city in Siberia. Temperatures in January have plummeted as low as negative 62 degrees Fahrenheit. It's one of the most formidable climates on the planet and home to what some have called the toughest wrestling tournament in the world, the Urigan. The name itself inspires awe, conjuring images of a cityscape locked in ice and wave after wave of the very best wrestlers Russia has to offer. There are no world titles on the line here, no shot at Olympic gold. Why then do we come? Why has the United States chosen to send its best and brightest talent to the other side of the globe? It's January in Siberia, and I've decided to travel to Krasnyarsk to find out for myself. We're in Moscow, Russia, at the airport, Sherman Table Airport. We got a long layover. We came from Austin to New York straight here. It's cold outside. It's cold and dark uh, in these regions, and it's only going to get colder and darker. We're heading to Krasnyarsk, Russia. Uh, it's about another four-hour flight from here to go to the Ivan Yurigan. We've been there in 2013. Myself, Joe Flo, uh, and Gena all went out there for Russian Nationals. Thing is, that was the summertime. It was beautiful out. It's gonna be stark contrast. Oh, it's gonna warm up. It's gonna warm up. So the the low today is negative 22. The low doesn't go any. The low is negative nine in a couple days. <laughs> no big deal. We've been traveling for 34 and a half hours. We started this uh, timer on the runway in Austin. So we can get there under 40. That's a win in my book. Descending into Krasnyars, I can't help but wonder why I'm doing this to myself. The 40 hours of travel have taken an unexpected toll on my body. My head hurts, my ankles are swollen, and I've yet to face the city's legendary cold. What is so special about this particular tournament in this remote corner of the world that would make it worth all this hassle? At the airport, I'm met by a familiar face, Polly from USA Wrestling, who guides me into the city. Polly, you've been working with USA Wrestling for how long? Oh, from the 70s. <laughs> what do you like most about Kras? Uh, competition. Yeah. Uh, it's lots of teams, lots of good competition. If you win here, you win Olympic. No, oh, yeah? <laughs> when when did this this tournament, the Ivan Yurik, when did it start? Around eighties, the end of the late eighties. Okay. We've been coming here. One year we came here, was no food. On hotel it was bad time. We Yarigin took truck and we went to his mother. She lived here. Oh, really? Four hundred kilometers. They bring chicken. They kill. For all the chicken to, to feed athletes. So wait, this tournament, the tournament started in, in the 80s. When did Ivan Uregan die? 90s. In the 90s? Yeah. So he was alive when the tournament started? Oh, yeah, sure. How good was Ivan Uregan as a wrestler? Very good. He wrestled Russ Alex. Yeah, he was tough. We are here. We made it to Krasnyarsk. It's a brisk minus 12 degrees Fahrenheit, but you know what? The good news is we made it. Very chilly out here. I do have multiple layers on. I could leave some extra long johns on my on my on my bottom side, but you know whatever. This is sweet. Look how long it takes them to. How they even? We're staying here at the Hotel Krasnyarsk. Uh, the whole U.S. team is going to be staying here. We're actually part of the delegation, so it's going to be great kind of having this inside look, all access kind of feel. Uh-oh, it's a wild dog. Doesn't it look like a wolf? He doesn't want to have nothing to do with us. Should I go try to pet it? All I need is rabies from a Siberian husky. 
This was about as long enough of an intro for me because I'm freezing my butt off. I'm gonna go inside. After a brief stop in our hotel room, we were off to meet Bill Zadek and the American delegation at a training facility nearby. So we're uh, going to the workout facilities right here. Uh, huge workout facility. I think they said there's like eight maybe different training rooms. We're gonna go in there. There will be tons of people wrestling. It's a pretty awesome atmosphere. All these international tons of Russians in there. And it's kind of a historic place, so we'll go inside and take a pander. It's almost like sneaky. Every, every corner you go around, there's not a locker room, sauna, or wrestling. There, among a sea of Russian faces, on the far side of the world, we found an embassy, a little enclave of Hawkeye country. Terry Brands runs Brent Metcalf and Tony Ramos through a workout. It'll be interesting to see who shows up. What the carrots are for that. Do you think there'll be more people to find or less people? I think more people. I think it's. I think it's a strong part of the process, right? The winners of this and the winners of Rush the Nationals. For them to determine their team. For, for their team is, yeah. If it's two different people, then uh, you know they use the use Europeans or they use the you know, Poland tournament and so on to kind of finalize that. I like it. Represent for the home yeah, team. Yeah. Right there. It's not a lot of Mike Zadig shirts floating around. Mike Zadig wrestling. I want one of those. So here at the Oregon, most of our international events are plus two kilo until you get to championships, Pan Am championships, Continental championships, you know, our trials, world championships, Olympic games. Ramos and Dennis getting their weight down a little bit today and they'll do their final cut tomorrow, be down to 59 kilo. Uh, Andrew Howe is in pretty good shape too. Uh, did a little massage and then he was finished. He's gonna sit in the sauna at the hotel tonight. And uh, I think all three of those guys will do one cut tomorrow and be down the way, ready to scrap. So are you done with the wrestling for today? Yeah. Right now, how much, uh, we'll write in tomorrow, right? What do you think you're at? Uh, probably like five. Five. How much you get off tonight? Uh, I'll try and go to bed. I'll see you. So you work out? You sauna? You do both? We'll sauna at night around ten. Deal. I believe these kids are Mongolian. Where are you from? Mongolian? Tua. Where are you from? Russia. Russia. Tua? Tua. It's another... 2,000 miles right, east of here. Wow. 2,000 miles east of here. That's almost back home. <laughs> I was just going to say that. It's like <laughs> Alaska. My Russian's about that much, so we're using Google Translate. It Do you speak English? No. No. No, Russian? Yeah. Tell them about you guys, right? Yeah. yeah. They, just asked the, they just asked a question about the cameraman, Tony. Why camera? As the sun sets on day one in the crash, my head is spinning with exhaustion. I am cold, 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 and all I want to do is crawl into bed and sleep for a year. Let's just hope tomorrow will be a little warmer. Day two, it's negative 28 degrees here in Krasnyars. We're headed over to a workout. We'll see Snyder, Barner, and Bobby Telfer going around. It's cold. This is how cold. <laughs> yeah, there's no stop signs or anything. You just kind of, you got to worry about these guys coming this way, but then you got to worry about traffic coming this way. 
Tony, if I get hit, you keep rolling. You got it. Go. Okay, go. Okay, there you go. Well, I don't know how to use that camera all that well, so you're, I'm going to have to be the one that dies. <laughs> That's exactly what I think. <laughs> Arriving at the training facility, I walk into the biggest wrestling room I've ever seen. Six full mats busy with activity. I spot Jake Varner and Bobby Telfer getting ready to work out. They're joined by a swarm of kids, wrestling fans who want autographs and selfies with the American team. Pretty cool to see all these little kids know Jake Varner. They're educated, man. No doubt these kids will be pulling for the Russians come competition day, but you wouldn't know it to look at them. My name is Jen. I am from Russia. <laughs> Nearby, Kyle Snyder is in the middle of his warm-up. Cold room today, getting him warmed up. Got to push through a little extra warm-up, you know? Make sure we don't get injured. Make sure your heart rate's up. Core temp elevated before you start manipulating your body, your joints, muscles. Basically, when you get done with your warm-ups, you should be ready to wrestle live before you start drilling. That way, especially in a cold room, cold environment, different mats that we're not used to the feel, uh, we stave off any lower the potential for injury. So the goal for the rest of the guys today is to get what they need, sharpen up, feel good, release a little tension with your muscles, but, but mainly is your sharpening and being crisp before we get to competition. These guys, uh, weights, every, everybody's weight is good, so uh, not too worried about that, just taking care of business. Ready, go. Hit. Circle up. I run into former Olympic gold medalist John Peterson, who gives me a little perspective on what it means to be a wrestler on this side of the globe. I've noticed, like, you're like a rock star here. Well, okay, <laughs> you're 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 well liked and known, like probably known here more than in a lot of places in the U.S. Oh yeah, by far. By, by far. What's that like? Well, part of it's because of uh, wrestling being more a part of the culture of some of these places in the United States. Uh -huh. So, and then I've traveled to Mongolia a lot, and so there's, there's some of these kids, I don't know about right now, but yesterday we're from Bratia, which is right north of Mongolia, and I've, I've been there several times with U.S. teams. And then, uh, actually, there's a, there's a tournament named after me in Mongolia. Is it called the John Peterson? Yeah, it's called the John Peterson Tournament. When I'm at places like this, every once in a while a kid will come up and say, yeah, yeah I won your tournament. <laughs> One more foot fire? Yeah, real short, like six goes. Six switches, like two or three seconds. You know what I mean? Quick yeah. transition. One knockout there. One knockout here. Quick. Ready for some fire? Let's go. I need so what's, what's the scoop on this tournament? Why do we travel halfway across the world to go to the frozen tundra in January? I think the best reason for coming here is the mental toughness that you can get from wrestling after the grueling grind of, you know, you guys know what the trip was like. Right? Uh -huh. If our guys can, can go through that stuff and do well in a tournament like this, they've, they've known that they've, they've beaten the mental battle a lot. I think that anytime you're in a foreign culture, it tests the senses. And I think that's really important from my perspective as a coach. I think this is an important event for this country, our country, to be here every year because it is very adverse. Why? Because it's there. Uh, why Everest, right? Why anything? This tournament, competition-wise, is the toughest tournament in the world. You win here, but you're going to get to Rio, and the, some of the things that you dealt with to get here aren't going to be as prevalent down there. So you learn, you move forward, you learn a lot about yourself. It's really how you carry this forward and the information that you get back from this as a competitor, as a winner, that determines you know where your career is going to go next. It's the holy grail. You're going into the, the dragon's lair, you know? This, this is where you want to be. If you, if you want to be the best of the best, this is where you want to compete and win. Rock and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think Ivan Drago lives just down the street. Awesome, Bill, thanks. A few
few minutes later, Zadig informs me that not all is well in the crabs. So today's Thursday, one day before competition, and upon arrival, and as of yesterday, we were under the impression that tomorrow, uh, 57's wrestling in 74. So Ramos, Dennis, and Hal, now just standing here with Bill Zadig, it looks like they're hearing rumors that 65 is also tomorrow. So that's Stever and Metcalf. Bill got a call or a text or something from Logan Stever, and he looked at the back of his credential and, and sees that weigh-ins for 65 are tomorrow, which, it's crazy to find out one day before that you're supposed to weigh in tomorrow instead of two days from now. It's a big deal for these guys that are cutting a significant amount of weight. So Bill's taking a shower right now. We're going to head with him back to the, to the hotel and to wherever else to get to the bottom of this and find out exactly what's going on, who's wrestling when, and, and what the deal is. So welcome to Russia. Back in the hotel lobby, Terry Brands goes three rounds with Pauly to try to sort out this mess. Two Olympic weights on Saturday wrestle, two Olympic weights at Sunday wrestle, according to the schedule, which would make more sense. Listen, you have to look for the Sunday credential. That's you have to follow. Well, guys, we go to the upstairs. I sent an email to USA Wrestling one day before I left. They said, I need the most current schedule you have. They sent me the other way. They're telling me that's wrong. That's the way you say it. I went to a press conference, nobody questioned. Okay. So I can't wait so, so that can't okay, wait to With our fingers crossed that the issue has been resolved, the guys pack up and head for weigh-ins. Little did we know that the day had more confusion in store for the American delegation. Uh, I'm right on right now, or point one under, point zero one under maybe, or point zero something under. Good, good to go. Wayne's not so far. You check it. Yeah. Fifty-eight point nine. You're doing fifty. Fifty. Well, it's fifty-nine with two kilos. Yeah. Wait, what? Are you talking about the 65? So the guys are cutting weight right now because they think they're weighing in tomorrow. Look at this credential and it has them, it's in, it's in Russian of course so we don't, don't read it but uh, it's telling us 65 is going to weigh in tomorrow. So we call uh, our contacts in Russia to confirm uh, which schedule they're going to go with and everybody that we can communicate with confirms that the credential is the king. And that's what we're going with. So it's going back to the original way. Wow. And Brent's cut weight right now? Yeah, he's getting down to weight. Yeah. I mean, on, on a dime's notice, didn't say a word. Didn't say a word. I don't, I don't think it's intentional. In, They're just unorganized or malicious. Yeah. But I think it's, they don't care. You're in. They don't care. You're in. But everybody, every, like, we saw 65 guys cut weight today at the morning session. So, like, everybody's going to be. We'll see what they say tomorrow. And, you know, probably won't really know until, until it's tomorrow. So we'll adapt and make the best of it and find a way to win anyways. So with another last-minute shakeup, day two comes to a close. What have I learned? Three valuable lessons. One, the Russians' love of wrestling knows no national boundary. Two, never underestimate the value of long underwear. And three, when you're in the crass, even the best laid plans can go awry, so you'd better be ready to roll with the punches. I wonder what I'll learn tomorrow. We're going against all the judgments anybody's told us. <laughs> oh. Woo!
People here absolutely love wrestling. Hey, Pasha, get that, get up, the rush you out of there.